Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode. How are you, Miss Honoré? So good. I'm so excited for this topic, Lucas, because I had a little bit of like, I had to scrape all my brain matter off the ceiling and put it back in my head after our, our conversation yesterday. So I'm really excited to dive into this topic today. It's going to be fun. We're going to talk about making a mini course from a flagship course or a, you know, bigger course, if you will. I think yeah. in the book, I had to refer to it as like a complete course, because when I started writing, I was like, some people aren't going to maybe know what flagships are. Yes. So if you have like a whole course that you built out, that's like a program of information, yep. you can peel pieces of that out and yes. sell them as mini courses, which is awesome. Yeah. And you and I have both done that in the last two weeks. We've created mini courses from our flagship courses. I did mine within an hour yesterday talking to you in the last 24 hours, which is just <laughs> crazy mind blowing. But first we have to thank our sponsor for this episode and our sponsor is kind of as always the empire builders masterclass which is your one-stop shop as an entrepreneur for courses to help you write your book get organized become more effective create a course understand course platforms and so much more absolutely love it and right. helen helen's um course on there is just amazing Commit to achieve. I can't Commit stop bragging achieve. about that course. Yep. Yep. So I, Helen Bullen is the author of the new book, Agnes B. Cancer and Me. And it is a, a journal entry format of a book that chronicles her journey to kicking some cancer boute. Yes, there it is. Um, and Helen is just someone that we both greatly admire uh she released agnes b cancer and me not very long ago as we record this um the end of march 2023 yeah. and she is now cancer free and just back on it and i have to say though when i say back on it what i really mean is she never got off of it <laughs> yeah right i mean throughout the whole process of diagnosis and losing her hair and chemotherapy and then getting her all clear she has consistently showed up and been in her business and had mastermind retreats and supported her membership and written this book and is working on her next book or two she com completely defies uh and challenges anyone to say well what's your excuse you know i have yep. cancer <laughs> so you haven't written your book you haven't done your course you haven't done something so anyway, just a big, huge shout out to uh, the EBMC as our sponsor and specifically this week, uh, Helen Bullen's Commit to Achieve course. So thanks, Helen. Go on, Helen. Yeah, and that book is, super, like you said, Honore, just super inspirational. Um, I mean, I- laugh, you'll cry. I laughed, I cried. I wrote the foreword. So I got the first <laughs> rough draft of it. And I promise you that through like snot and tears, I was also doing- the the i was guffawing i was laughing so hard because in one moment you're you're on the you're in the chair with her and they're telling her you know this is the treatment and this is what you're going to do and this is what's going to happen and in the next moment she throws out some kind of funny hellenism and it's just fantastic so yeah you'll love the book if you get a chance to read it and we highly recommend that you do so what's new in your world lucas oh my gosh um well, one, one thing that's new in my world is I was at a strategy session in Nashville with somebody last week. Oh, were you? Hmm. Yeah, How did so that go? I've been working on that. Was it awful? That. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> Not what Karen Hunsanger asked you. Was it terrible? Was it awful? Miserable? <laughs> so, yeah, I was fortunate enough for those that are watching or listening. I was fortunate enough to travel to Nashville um, to, to spend some time with Honoré and a friend of ours, Michelle Oglesby. And um, every quarter I, I try to set one of those visits so that I can work on my business strategy. Um, so if you're listening to this and you're wondering like a little bit behind the curtain, that's something I do every quarter is I look at where my business is going and what I wish it was doing and what I, what I, what I want to revise or whatever. And if, you, if, you, if that doesn't resonate with you, I don't know what kind of business you're running because there is no perfect business. We're never done. And um, it's not like a, like a fine, like goal setting thing. It's all about like, where, what do I want my business to be? 
and every quarter I want to make sure that I'm checking where I'm at against what I plan to do. And so that was a phenomenal trip. Thank you very much, Honoré, for, for hosting. Yes. And uh, the other thing that's been going on in my life is uh, I've been building a community for Monetize Your Book with a Course, which this is the first time I publicly talked about it. Nice. Um, and it's pretty exciting putting this thing together um, and just taking my time building building out what I hope some people will enjoy here in the future. But uh, yeah, what about you? Um, well, I have a new book. So oh, yeah, I've, I've been reading that book formula. too. I think you might have one. <laughs> or 20. I do. Um, the best-selling book formula subtitle, write a book that will make you a fortune. And we don't need to spend too much time on it. It answers the question, are there authors that are unicorns? Are there books that are truly special? Or can any author reverse engineer how to make their book a best-selling book, more specifically a best-earning book? And what are the components? So I challenged my assumption that some authors were you know, just special, right? Just hit with a special lightning strike. And it was like, well, they were destined to be successful. Well, it turns out that while that might be some of it, right? Luck is preparation meeting opportunity. That mostly what happened was they managed to hit a few of the notes that best earning books have over time. So you want a best earning book, one that makes money week, month, year, decade uh, over time, year in, year out over time. And, and in my study of a thousand books, I looked at a thousand books to, yeah, like a, that's a real, that's a real number um, to identify the, it's, it's, it's my job. Reading is my job. Um, <laughs> I had to uh, really identify what are the common uh, elements or, and I identified four of them. So I call them the four keys that when you know what they are, you can apply them to your book. So we can probably just come back and talk about this in another special episode later, but that's what's new with me is I released the best-selling book formula, the best-selling book formula action guide, which is this time a free bonus that comes with the book. And then there is the best-selling book formula mini course, but that's not it. why we're here today. I love it. And yeah. you know what? I'm just realizing something. Cause I get, I got some looks when I showed, showed this book to people, they were like, oh, that's kind of compact. It's like a small book. And I'm like, yep. It's a little bit bigger than my phone. Right. Yeah. So if you're used yep. to reading on a phone and you like that compact design, this is just outstanding. And there's zero sacrifice in this book. Like the gutter's still manageable. Everything's very, very, very nicely done. And, um, I'd asked Honoré, Why, why'd you make the book so small on this one? She's like, you can fit it in a jacket pocket. I'm like, I've got no reason not to have this book on me. <laughs> At all times. That's what Kent Sanders said. He's like, I just want to carry it around. And I said, yeah. please do that. Please carry it around. Please yeah, carry it around. Yeah, it in all your pockets. It's great. All the time. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, wanted a quick, I wanted a quick read that could make an impact fast. So and it, people immediately apply it. It is that kind of read. It is right to it. Um, and I love that about it. It was, you know, like, like almost like you feel like you're just getting like warmed up and it's like, oh, wait, where's my notebook? Like I, we're already there. I got to start jotting these things down. Yes, so. that's right. Excellent. That's right. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to dive into today's topic? Yeah, because that's not why we're here. All the other stuff we talked about is not why we're here. We are here because yesterday, um, yesterday we were on your Q and A. So you do these wonderful Q and A's with your courses as do I, that are for people who are trying to put what you teach into action. And so you host these Q and A's and I show up cause I'm a student of your courses. And you had mentioned to me the concept of, which I then wrote in my notebook, my bullet journal as something to do, which was to take my flagship course or my full course which is publishing PhD and turn them, turn it into a mini course. I legitimately, I don't think I believed you. It's not that I thought that you were lying. I just thought I am uh, knowledgeable enough to be dangerous in, in creating some things. And so I thought, well, it's really easy for Lucas to do it fast, but Honoré, not so much. Honoré is going to need more time. I speak of myself in the third person. And so yesterday, my question was, 
how do I take a piece of publishing PhD and turn it into uh, a mini course for sale that would provide value to someone? And the very first question you asked me was, do you remember? I do. Okay, go ahead. Tell us what the first question is because anyone watching this, and this is gonna be a, a, a video that's not too much longer. Anyone watching this can do this process in an hour or two hours or less, I promise. So the question was. So if you have a big course and you're trying to figure out like what part of this do I take out? My first question always for my clients, partners, friends, whatever, that has a course, if they already have a full course developed, that's kind of like the criteria for, for entering the conversation with this question is what part of that course, what section, chapter, module, whatever, what segment, what topic in that course do you get asked about all the time? Like, is there someone always saying, I have a specific question and you know you covered in that course in, in good mm -hmm. enough detail where it could stand on its own. You can yep. take that chapter and make it into a mini course. So for example, um, in, in, your, in your course in publishing PhD, I said, Honore, what's one topic you cover in that course that everyone always asks about? And you said, it's about crafting my, your book. Yeah, where do I start? Yep. How do I get started? Or alternatively, and I wanna put this out there because I think some people go, well, maybe I'm not getting a question. Mm -hmm. What I see in terms of mistakes people make with mm -hmm. writing their book yep. is they go, oh, I have this title. And then they say, I'm 80% of the way done with the book. And I think, are you, <laughs> did you do the pre-work that's necessary? Did you get the clarity that's necessary in order to write a best earning book? So the best selling book formula is just one aspect of a best earning book. There are lots of other things or other questions to answer and clarity to have before you start writing a book. And so that was the answer to the question is what's the thing I get all the time. The first question I get is where do I begin? Okay. And so then we, we kind of took off from there. So mm -hmm. what happened next? So then, then what we look at is, and it's kind of the obvious thoughts for someone who's created their own course. They say, well, I didn't make that content for a different application. So can I actually use it? And the answer is yes, as long as it can stand on its own, meaning you don't have like an like a in the lesson that where you talk about that topic, it doesn't start with welcoming, welcome to publishing PhD lesson four or whatever, right? Like right. that would be specific to the master uh, course. Right. Yep. Right. So the first thing you want to do is say, can this stand on its own? And if the answer is no, it's got a little bit of uh, of um, of that Contact. flavor to it. Yeah. The next question would be, well, what would I have to do to make it stand on its own? Now, a mini course generally doesn't have a whole lot of content because it is a smaller course. So you're looking at something that could be up to an hour or two hours of content. If it's more than an hour, I'd probably say you're you're getting you're getting beyond like just breaking out a little mini course in a quick fashion. But you would just say, can I can I make this stand on its own? I record all my lessons so they can stand on their own, right? On purpose when yeah. I create my flagship courses, knowing that I might want to repurpose that content in the future. So your intro and the actual content should be separate. And so if you can take the actual topic-based content and plug it into your mini course and make a new intro, you're in you're in pretty good standing. Now that that intro can be something as as involved as a new video. Or it could be as something as simple as a PowerPoint or PDF with an audio over it. That's so, what blew my mind. That's yeah. what blew my mind is how quickly I was able, I, I'm not technology Susie, <laughs> <laughs> but I was able to take a, not a screenshot, but a picture, an image and turn it into a PDF image and then record and it's it was under the presentation option, right? So in Thinkific, in Thinkific, yeah. If you're creating a new lesson, it asks you, do you want audio or video or words or PDF or something like that? And so you you actually choose presentation, you mm -hmm. import your image, yeah. and then you press record. Yeah. And so I recorded a 10 second intro, which is what you said. Here's what you need to say in this. I recorded it. I saved it. I had Holly create a course card for the mini course. 
And then boom, within an hour, I had a mini course. I have a mini course that is now for sale called Crafting Your Book. Right. Yeah. And so that that first intro that you made yeah. like in Thinkific, it's that easy, right? You can just upload a presentation. It's called a presentation lesson. You just upload that PDF, do the audio over it, and then call it good. What did the audio say? Hi, I'm Honoré Corder. Welcome to Crafting Your Book. Yeah. I, I, you know, keep an eye out at the end of the lesson for yeah. a special offer. We yes. just primed them to like finish the and class. And enjoy. And then enjoy the lesson, yeah. right? Enjoy what you're about to learn yep. that has a very high value that is available to you and will help you get, get clear. And also then for the course creators, it helps anyone, at least this is what I'm hopeful about, right? This is my intention is that anyone watching it goes, oh, this is the first lesson of eight lessons. And if this is what I get, then I probably need the whole rest of the bigger course, right? right. Isn't that really part of part of the underlying? Yeah. It's an stand opportunity, on its own, but it's a piece of a bigger puzzle. Yeah. You're, you're basically providing a fantastic lead in or a step up to the bigger course. So you can, you can use the closing uh, lesson of your mini course to upsell your learner to your bigger course. Now, if you hear the word upsell and you're like, Ugh, cringe sales, well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but um, you're missing out on an opportunity of helping right. your client go even right. further, which they, they might need. And you're doing a disservice to them if you don't point they them want. in the direction of more resources. Right. Yes, so, you want not just lesson one, but you want all the lessons. Sorry to interrupt, right. but this was just, this was a game changer for me, y'all, because Lucas has said this for months. You can take a big course and take a little piece out of it and create a mini course. And I did, I wrote it down and every month I was transferring it over like January to February task, February to March task, March to April task. Oh, I've got to do that mini course. And if I had known if January honoree could know what April honoree knew, then I probably would have sold some courses and I'd have some new shoes by now. But my shoe collection is still very sad because I did not get my act together and do this in a very short period of time. You've already done the heavy lifting by creating another course. Right. Alternatively though, if we kind of reverse engineer it, when you put together your next course, make sure that you're making your lesson standalone so that you can pull out pieces that people may want to get. Yep. Also helpful. L right. Lucas, this has just been a game changer for me. Do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, just know. remember to keep it really simple. I mean, the structure is simple. You just take that lesson out of your existing course. You put a new intro on it. You put a new outro on it. The intro should welcome them to the mini course and it should be quick and easy. And then the outro should point them to the flagship course or to another resource. Basically make this like another step on the ladder up to your big, bigger offer, your, your bigger course. And then when you're done, with creating the course, don't go short sighted on or don't go skimp on the landing page like this is a real course you want people to exchange their money for it. It's easy to create so we kind of like are like oh man, this is so fast, this is amazing. Yeah, to that learner, this is like a this it's it's a it's a, it's just like any other course you're offering it's just a smaller package lower price point, And you want to make sure you have an appropriate landing page built for it so that you can sell the course without having to talk about it every time someone's interested, right? Make sure the landing page is, you treat the landing page just like you would for any other course. It's got enough copy to explain what you've got going on and what they're gonna learn and exactly what problem you're solving for the learner and then rock and roll. And then now your only challenge is not seeing a million mini courses every time you make a big course. <laughs> oh my gosh, right now I'm, in, now I'm like, hmm, what else can I do? <laughs> oh gosh, thank, thank you, Lucas. Yes, so thank you so much. much. Thank you for that information. And thank you for this video, which I know is really going to help people to take action on it. So once again, I want to say thank you to the EBMC, the Empire Builders Masterclass uh, as our sponsor. And the course uh, that we have most to thank today is Commit to Achieve by Helen Bullen. And we will see you uh, next time. But before you go, like this video, ring the bell and check out all the links. So I'll have links to commit to achieve. We'll have links to the EBMC, uh, the empirebuildersmasterclass.com to my brand new mini course, yep. uh, crafting your book. And then my other brand new mini course, uh, the best-selling book formula mini course. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on. 
uh, yes. blink and you'll miss it. So check out all the notes in below and we will see you next time. Take Bye, it easy everybody. guys.